Hey guys, and welcome back to the cafe for yet another soul of an artist excavation dig. So it's still morning for me and I'm enjoying some spiced chai tea latte. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Hey guys, and welcome back to the cafe for yet another soul of an artist excavation dig. So today it's still morning for me. I'm enjoying some chai tea and I hope you got something fun to drink so that we can get into today's topic. So a couple weeks back, we did the video of using your own photographs in your artwork, in your collage artwork. And today I wanted to talk about using copyright free, um, Avail commercially available images that you can use for your artwork, whether you want to give the artwork away, keep it for yourself, or sell it. With a commercial use copyright free image, you can do anything you want. The one thing you don't want to do that I would never want to do is take these images and resell them without altering them. I definitely want to turn them into, you know, make them my own, put them into my designs and integrate them into my artwork to where it becomes part of my design. So, you know, we can't always hop on a plane and go to the beach like if you live in the mountains like me it's very expensive today and it's even more expensive to hop in your car and take a drive down to the coast or vice versa let's say you live on the coast and you want to do some mountain scene artwork or you just want to do steampunk artwork or any kind of artwork that you just cannot have readily available access to getting those images yourself. That's where all this comes in. So I've taken a, the time to do a few images that I've gotten off of pixabay.com. And the three websites that I really like the most for doing this are pixabay.com, uh, unsplash.com and rawpixel.com. Now you can also buy memberships to get um, commercial free use of images and you can pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee and you get X amount of images um, per time period. I don't have any of those. I, there's so much readily available through Pixabay. That's my favorite. That's the one I like to use the absolute most. And there's so much available to me under the topics that I want to do artwork over that I don't need to do the others, but that is available too, just so you know. So let me show you the few images. I've got four here. Now these are all, um, I, here's this beautiful Robin's egg image and that's what I was after. I was after some eggs and nest images and I just pulled, I actually pulled, I downloaded quite a few of these, but I only printed these two here and then, oh, these are so beautiful and I cannot wait to show you. Look at this. Here is this fossilized seashell image that I pulled off of Pixabay. And here's another fossilized seashell image that I got off of Pixabay as well. So now what I've done with these is I have a laser printer. I have a Canon laser printer and I really like laser because the ink won't move on you, but it's perfectly fine. If you have an inkjet, all you have to do is top coat your images with a uh, Liquitex matte medium, some kind of fluid matte medium. Now, if you want them glossy, you can use a gloss medium. That's perfectly fine. I like matte. I prefer a matte finish so I always use matte medium and the way I do it is I use my 8 by 10 inch jelly plate and I just spread out a nice thin coat of the matte medium and then I put the image on and I walk away for about five minutes and I let it sit and really soak in all the medium into the paper so these are all on a laser printer but don't let that stop you if all you have is an inkjet as long 
long as you seal the image with medium, you will be just fine. You will be good to go. You can paint over these images and do everything you want if you seal them first, okay? And then this, I've just used regular printer paper on these because I wanted the paper to be really thin so that I could really easily manipulate it. So I'm going to think about which images I'm going to use. I might use all four. I might use one or two. Not sure yet. I definitely, definitely want to use this image. This is my favorite of the four. So let's head on over to the table and create some beautiful copyright free image collage art. Okay, so we made it over here to the table and I definitely want to use this image. I may use some of this, but I for sure want to start with this one. And then I just grabbed a few other papers. This is one of my um, hand painted papers that I did recently. And I've been scanning these like crazy. So I've got this one scanned up and I'm going to go ahead and use the original today. And then I've got my base is this is kind of a fun little size here. This is just a piece of cream cardstock, uh, nothing fancy, and it, the size is 11 by 7. So, 7 11, easy to remember those crazy commercials. I like, I just love the rectangle size. So that's why I picked that. There's those two. And then here's some of this hand painted marbled paper from Guyries. And then this is also some uh, botanical handmade paper from Guyries with the grasses in it. I really like this and I wanted something kind of mellow for your eye to be able to rest. You know, we get so many patterns going, at least I do, that I try to put something in to kind of calm things down and push them back a little. Now, this is a piece of wallpaper scrap paper, and I love this pattern, and I love this color, and I really love how blues play with browns, but I'm not entirely sure this is going to work for this project. I may use it. I may not. I also pulled some of this. This is another hand paper painted marbled paper from Guyries and um, they're local for me and I've said it a bunch of times. I have not looked online um, to see if they sell their papers online, but it's G U I R Y apostrophe S dot com. So you can check there. But if you look up handmade paper online, I bet you'd be really amazed at what you can come up with. So I want to start off with just doing this base of this paper here. So I grabbed my Mod Podge mat and I got to tell you guys, I've got, uh, I'm just going to talk and work. I've got a whole thing of uh, glue sticks stashed away and I want to start um, doing more collage with glue sticks. I've always used the Mod Podge mat because I've always done heavier papers. So this has worked out well for me in that regard. And, you know, I'll always use it for that reason. Get rid of the chunks out of it. But, um, when I use thinner papers, most of these papers are thinner, except for this is pretty thick because it's a wallpaper sample paper, but everything else is pretty thin. So uh, I want to start using experimenting with glue sticks. And the reason I bring it up, most of mine have, I've had them for a really long time. So I really fear that they're too old right now for me to even use. But if you have a glue stick that works really well for you, then um, I would love to hear about it. I'm in the States, so I'm sure that that matters. Um, Lizbeth and I were talking about glue sticks and she gets some really good ones from her local store, but Lizbeth is Dutch. So um, <laughs> we are not in the same country. So 
uh, there you go. Yeah, if you're in the US and you have a glue stick that you just love that works really well for you, please pop it in the comment section below for me because I love the Mod Podge mat and it really does work well for thick papers. But part of the problem with it is it makes your collage work really stiff, which is fine if you're gonna frame it. I really don't have too many problems with my artwork being thick. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of place this just like that so it overhangs a little bit. And again, I don't give myself a ton of time to think about stuff, but I do know that I want a lot of this paper to show through. So whether or not I'm successful at that is yet to be seen. <laughs> So yeah, you know, I just keep thinking about glue sticks because, you know, this is thick and it's heavy and it works great, but I'm always on the quest for the perfect glue. And for me, it's always been a few different glues, of course. And another thing, my collages always bow. When I first make them, like when I do this uh, Recollections chunky glitter that I get at Michael's, um, when I put that on, it's really wet with the matte medium and everything. So I have to let it sit and dry. And a lot of times my artwork buckles because of the Mod Podge matte. So I just let all the glitter and everything dry. And um, then I put it under some weight so that it can get really flattened out and it's always worked for me. I've never had a problem with it. So it's been great. So you guys should be so proud of me right now. Those of you that have been with me for a long time know that I am so freaked out about using originals. <laughs> so freaked out about it, but I'm getting so much better. And like I said, I did scan this. Now, the reason I like to cut this and for the 100 days of collage, um, I, I, of course, cut all of these off camera and then came back on to complete the collage. But the reason I like to cut this right away is because I just want to know where my perimeter is. Um, it's important to me most of the time with collage just because I want to make sure things are balanced. Um, I had to, of course, learn it the hard way. Sometimes I don't have the best pair of scissors here. Sometimes I uh, would do my collage and not care about cutting the perimeter until the very end. And I have put images where I thought they would look, you know, aesthetically pleasing and they didn't <laughs> because I didn't cut the perimeter. So I've learned to just do that right away. Now I have these beautiful scraps of this really gorgeous, grungy hand painted paper that I made. I have been having such a good time with this. If you've been watching my channel for the last couple soul of an artist, uh, excavation digs. I have um, been painting these papers and I'm still developing how to paint them and I'm not ready to share that yet. It's still in the creation phases so that's where I'm at with that. Oh I just love both of these together. Oh my gosh I could almost just ink this and put this on there and call it done. But no, I want to be a little bit more complicated than that. So I want a little chunk of this. And I really don't want too much of it. So here's something I like to do is just get a chunk of something I like. And then I like to bury the straight edges underneath another image. So now I've got to kind of figure out my placement. Where do I want this? I like to work with the rule of thirds. I'm always thinking about composition. I'm liking it here. I think I like that a lot. And I think I like that right there. So I really don't give myself a lot of time to think. I hate to lose any of this, but with collage, that's the nature of the beast. Am I right? 
So like with this paper right here, a glue stick would be really, really great. Why don't I go and grab one real quick and we'll just test it out now. I'll be right back. All right, so I grabbed this Elmer's Craft Bond and it says repositionable, so that's kind of cool. And then I've got this washable glue, school glue stick, which I think this is probably going to be the weakest of the three. And then I've got this uh, Scotch Craft Stick, so we'll give this a shot. I have Yoohoo, I have a bunch of Yoohoo, and I'm really disappointed in it. It has been uh, so all of my stuff has come up every time I've used it. I don't know if I got a bad batch or what happened, but uh, I've had a really bad time with the Yoohoo. So let's see here. I'm not yeah, I like that. I like that. So let's go for that. But before we do, let's see what else if we want to add any of these others. Now, if I add this, it's going to be a sliver. So let's cut it to length, first of all. I like to run pieces the whole length of my piece a lot of the time. But I just think this is going to distract away from my central image a little too much. And this is pretty nice. I could use a chunk of this. I don't know if I want it to go the length, though. I'm thinking maybe this is not the best. Oh, there we go. Uh, I think I'll just... Get a chunk of it here. And I like to stack stuff too. That's always fun to do. This is the hard part for me where you have to kind of just figure out where you want stuff. Okay, I like that right there. So another thing that you guys know I love to do is ink stuff up. And I've got some archival sitting here. I've got my watering can. And I've got my black, and I want the drama of the jet black. So this is Ranger Archival Ink. And I want to hit this image. And of course, I just tore it, and I wasn't really too precise. Get rid of these little part here. That's better. I like that better. I want a rough edge because this is a fossil. And I just think the rough edge really does it justice. So I like to make the, um, I like to ink it just to make it, you know, be the star of the show and to stand out above the other papers. And this helps to push back your other papers and um, it helps them to be more of like, a, you know, the backup band to the lead show. So now I want to hit this a little too, just to, because I like it. <laughs> I don't always ink everything. I'm not going to ink this because it's so bright, but I think I definitely want to tear, get torn edges on everything. Now, I love torn edges and straight edges together a lot of the time, but this time... I think I'm going to go all torn. So that's going to be hidden. This edge is going to be hidden. Now, if I can get this paper to cooperate, I just want to get a nice torn edge along there. And we'll try this Scotch craft stick. You know, I've heard so many things, good things about the Yoohoo, and I bought a whole bunch of it and I've had nothing but problems getting it to stick and I don't know if it's the batch if they let it sit out or what happened but the stuff is in my opinion as of right now pretty awful and um, I don't want to spend any more money on it again so I'm kind of in a dilemma of the glue stick situation. So if you've got it dialed in, I would really, really love to hear from you. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I kind of like this showing. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put this here and I am gonna leave that torn edge. I kind of wanna keep that. I want it to barely overlap the piece. Ooh, you know what I didn't do though. That's gonna push this up pretty high. Well, I hope this stuff's repositionable. There you go. And it's old, I can say that. So I wanna bring it down a little bit. Arg. This happens to me. So it happens quite often. I'm kind of sorry to say, but I'm not embarrassed at all to say that because it just happens. You know, sometimes it's funny because I know I'm not the only one because here this one says repositionable. <laughs> I know I am not alone in that. So I might do, I'm wondering, I'm having a little trouble getting away from this blue, but I'm afraid it's gonna be, let's try. Oh, some, wall, some of these wallpapers you can tear and some of them you can't. So it's nice when you can. Oh no, I, I don't know, I don't know. I love blue and brown together. I really do love blue and brown together. I think that little chunk looks pretty cool. This is way too high. I don't like that that high. I want it down further, which is a problem. Darn it, Corey. Oh, am I getting lucky with this or what? My goodness, girl. This is kind of embarrassing going through this. This is still ultra sticky, guys. <laughs> so, I'm kind of glad this is happening because it just goes to show that, you know what? Sometimes you got to move your stuff more than once. <laughs> I'm liking the look of this. And I've got to say with this bright blue and gold, I really want to highlight it with this. And I'm going to go ahead and get both of these edges off just to have that beautiful torn look all the way for whatever is showing. I want it to be torn and inked both. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm pretty impressed so far with this. And you guys are probably sitting there going, that's the right one. That's the best one. I swear. I remember hearing somebody say that this is the best here. So I have this one. I don't have very much of it. So before I glue anything else, let's get our placement straight. This is something when I'm doing the 100 days of collage that I work out before I film them because I really do want to keep those videos short. I like that layered up look. I'm losing quite a bit of the gold underneath, maybe just a sliver of that blue. Yeah, somewhere like that. Okay, so we'll take those off and this is just about where I want that. I've got this little uh, just book cover as my little glue sheet. I always like to, I usually use poster board. But when I sat down, I didn't have an extra piece of it. So we're just going to use this. And I love to have tweezers handy because they work so great for holding your stuff down while you're trying to get the glue on it. Okay, so I don't want to lose all this. So now is where I get to the point where now that I've got this positioned where I need it, and it's kind of central to the piece, but that is not going to matter once I get the focal point on. You won't even notice because the focal point is going to be following the rule of thirds. It's going to be in the sweet spot right there. Now, when I say rule of thirds, I know I'm saying to the choir, but let's go over it real quick. The rule of thirds, you always want to think of a tic-tac-toe grid. So you've got a line here, a line here, a line here, and a line here. Where those lines intersect are the sweet spots. Now, the rule of thirds, it's um, sometimes artwork to me can look really cool dead center and it's if you know 
know the rule. It's one of those things where when you know the rules, you can break the rules, right? So um, dead center is really cool sometimes, depending on what it is. But um, thirds, like you always, if you're doing a landscape type thing, you want two thirds horizon or two thirds earth with one third of the other. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm sure you do. But um, it's just more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So that's just a tiny smidge on composition. And it's a fast and easy rule that you can follow uh, as you're working. And it doesn't slow me down. You can get into the golden ratio and other composition rules and um, things that you can do composition wise. And um, they can get a little bit more complicated. Uh, so I just like to stick when I'm doing collage. This is not always true, but when I'm doing collage, I like to stick with the rule of thirds. Okay, so that's looking good to me. I just want a sliver of that blue. I am loving this paper and I really want it to show up more than anything. So this, <laughs> this glue stick is like super glue. I'm amazed. I'm really impressed so far with this. Very impressed. Look, my fingers are sticking to everything. So if you use this and you like it, let me know because so far I'm pretty happy. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to go ahead. Now I did this image, like I said earlier, it's just on printer paper. Sometimes I like to print my stuff on cardstock because I want it to withstand the test of time and I want it to uh, be more sturdy because sometimes I like to do different things to it, paint on it, stitch on it, whatever, right? So sometimes the thicker paper really works perfect for me. And it's a personal preference thing. You know, you guys get it. Um, I see a lot of artists that I really love their stuff and it really looks like they use nothing but thin papers, tissue papers, uh, really thin handmade papers, all that kind of stuff. And I love of that but there's so many heavy papers that I just I, I refuse to get away from them because they're so beautiful I just love them okay so that's working for me I didn't push it down really hard until I looked at the monitor I like this very much so here's a nice simple piece of artwork that is a copyright free focal point backed up with my paper and I have torn this image. You want to alter it somewhat. You really do. And I've got some water here and I want to add some spatter and I also want to, I don't have my paint handy, so I want to edge this with black. Now it is buckling and rippling on me a little bit and I get that a lot. So it doesn't bother me. I'm not worried about it. It does straighten out as it dries so I really don't get too hung up on that and it can be very bothersome and I get that I totally understand that but I don't let it get to me because I can let it dry and if it's still rippled I can put it under books I can walk away from it for a while but um, I just don't ever my artwork comes out and I'm happy with the way my artwork looks and I just don't let it get to me and maybe maybe I let stuff get to me for so long for so many years as a faux finisher I had to have everything just so for my clients and um, it was great but it, it was a lot of pressure and a lot of stress and now I really rebel against that okay like here my perfectionism is like oh, that's not right but I just give it a little tear and move on. So now I really rebel 
<laughs> against perfectionism when I'm doing artwork and um, the messier my artwork the more I love it because I don't want to ever have to be that perfectionistic artist again it was really hard on me and I lost a lot of sleep and it was you know not good it just wasn't good for me to be so worried all the time but I charged a lot of money and I needed to get things right it was very very important that I get things right so it's nice because my body rebelled against me and my shoulders and my neck and my legs and my back and every other part of me said no more no more we're done with this we're not doing this anymore so um, I was Choiceless in the matter and I had to start doing smaller artwork okay so this I missed a spot with the Mod Podge and I could just take a little smidge of it I will it's gonna be the easiest solution I'm just gonna rub my thumb in there take this paper towel and smooth it down yeah, so that's about as um, precious as I get. I love that little phrase. Don't get precious about it, right? So here we go. Now, let's look at this. This is a lovely piece of artwork. I want to move this so that we can see it. Try to knock off all that. My, uh, my little thingy is getting all old and worn and it's shedding everywhere now. So I'm going to have to replace it. But let's close in on this. Get everything, all the distractions out. So what do you think? Now I have these other images. And I could throw stuff like I could just tear this and throw a little bit down here. And I'm tempted because this is a cool little piece, but I don't want to cover any more of my hand painted paper in the background. So I'm going to save these images for another project. And um, I'll be sure to when I do use these, I'll use them right here on my channel. But this just goes to show you if you need an image and you're really thinking about something that you just can't get it out of your mind and you have to create with a particular image. Here's how you can do it just grab some stuff off the internet okay so let's do a couple more fun things now all right I, I definitely want to add some spatter to this but I want to protect my seashells so I'm just going to take the back side of this and cover most of that and then I've got some water here and I've got a little lid here and I've just got this craft smart white paint handy so let's do a little tiny dot of that and then I've got my favorite fan brush I think I got this in a pack of brushes at an auction and Oh my gosh, I've gotten so much cool stuff at auctions and I don't really go anymore because there's not really any good auctions to go to anymore, but I love this brush and I have a few and the scratchier of a fan brush, the older and scratchier and more beat up of a fan brush that you can get your hands on, the better because my smooth ones, they're a pain in the butt. They don't work near as good. I don't like them near as much and uh, this brush just does it for me so there we'll throw some spatter on really a nice little touch here to an already hand painted paper and then this is so white that it there's so much white in this image it would just have gotten lost in there anyway and it really doesn't need any help So I just like to add spatter to stuff. So now there's that. So it's been edged and it's been spattered. And I want to add a little bit of this chunky. And then you know what else I have here is I have this uh, mica. But I think I'm going to pass on this 
today. This is some cool mica chunks. I think this is Finnabar. I got this in a pack of like four of these. I got it at Michael's a very long time ago and it came in these with like I said like four different kinds. So um, I've had it for years and I rarely as you can see I really don't use it much but I just came across these in my stash and I want to use them more so I will be using those up but let's add a bit of this now my favorite thing product to use to put this on is Liquitex matte medium because the matte dries pure matte and so I think this one is sealed it is I have an open one let me grab that and we'll throw a little on and be done okay so I was lucky enough to pick up a couple of these on sale and I just don't want to open more than one at a time of course I'm going to go ahead and use this sponge again because I don't have my brushes handy and I'm going to put I'm going to put a little line of it here and I'm going to go, I like to go off the paper. I, this is how I rebel nowadays. <laughs> I rebel with my artwork. I'm like, oh, so you think I have to stay on the gold paper? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> now I want to add a, let's do a, another strip here. And this is just fun. It's fun to add a little bit of interest and bling. And then I want to add one more short little strip up here. I'm so thankful for the 100 Days of Collage Challenge because I have become very fast with my art. And, um, you know, I used to spend a lot more time and I was really slow and it always just completely drove me nuts about myself how slow I was for a long time you know my faux finishing jobs I was very precise and I always did sample boards so I was able to go in and work quickly and do it but everything I do now is a one-of-a-kind art so um, I, I got really slow for the longest time and um, it took me a, a lot of years to get past that perfectionistic I gotta have it just right uh, mentality you know that mindset that we find ourselves in as artists but now that I'm more of a free fall artist and I do um, every piece I do is different I've gotten so good at getting faster and I was getting better before the hundred days of collage and that challenge just sealed the deal for me it really helped me to become so fast so and you know what's funny I'm still slow <laughs> I'm a lot faster than I was but I'm still slow I'm on number 77 and it's funny I think I'm misleading people somehow without meaning to because I've had two people <laughs> tell me congratulations on completing the hundred days of collage and I'm like Arg, I'm only at number 77. <laughs> so I've got people, I'm doing something wrong because people think I'm done and I'm not. And I don't know what it is that I'm doing, dang it. But it's fine. It doesn't matter to me. I'm okay with it. It's all good. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece of paper here and just knock this. I like to just knock them. And I tell you, I used to, when I first started doing this, I used to come in and go ch -ch 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 and push that glue down, but I haven't been doing it and it's been staying just fine as I do it, right? It's been staying great for me. So what I do is I just knock off the excess, I give it a nice hard whack, and then I'm able to put the rest in my bottle 
and voila, we are done. So I want to do two things before I let you go today, and I hope you stick with me. Um, you know, I'm getting more comfortable talking, and I've always had people say, well, you don't even seem nervous. I don't know what you're talking about. But I struggle because I'm sitting here talking to myself, and I don't have anybody to bounce stuff off of. And my sister and I were talking about it the other day, and she had pointed that out. She's like, well, you're sitting there by yourself, and you know, because her and I banter and laugh, and I'm actually really funny. <laughs> I think I'm really funny. People might not agree with me, but I think I'm very funny. And uh, she thinks I'm very funny, so that makes two of us, okay? So two is, two is the majority, right? So <laughs> we were talking about it, and um, it occurred to me that, yeah, that might be it. So I have to say this, guys. I'm thinking I need another little, just a tiny little bit of glitter up here. So let's do it real quick. But um, I'm getting better at talking, and I want to talk and work at the same time. But I, my biggest hang-up about it, I have a couple things going on. One... My biggest hang up is I don't want to make the videos too long and I get to talk in and the next thing you know, the video is long, right? So I don't like that. And then two, um, I've tried to do voiceovers and I don't know what it is about my computer, but there is something when I try to record from my computer with a mic and I have numerous mics and I have a problem with each and every stupid mic I own. Um, it comes out terrible. My audio is awful. And I'm using a little mic right now, just a little lapel mic, and I plug it into my uh, camera, and my audio is at least... Um, it's bearable. <laughs> I won't say it's great, but you know, it's bearable. Plus, who of us really likes our voice? Anyway, I, I really struggle to hear my own voice. So that's a struggle. I don't like my voice. And I always think that it's a problem when it's really not. But um, the voiceover is just, I don't, my computer is not working well with the voiceovers. So Ah, some of my videos I'll talk and sometimes I'll talk too much and it's okay and I'm getting more comfortable and I like music because then I can speed things along and I can cut all the nonsense out. So, you know, I've got a couple ways of working with it, but I hope you guys are happy and I'm really happy. I'm very happy to be here. So here's this piece. Here is this fun, beautiful piece that I am already emotionally attached to this piece. And it's mostly because of this hand-painted paper in the back. And it is so funny because when I was on Robin McLennan's design team, she would make original art and then she would tear it up instantly and start using it. And that was always like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I couldn't handle that and and it's nothing that she's doing wrong of course it's me having a freak out over using original art but look i did it yay good job corey so i'm going to set this aside the other thing i wanted to talk with you about real quick is the exciting thing i want to do next and what i've got here let me grab this stuff this is so fun. So a long time ago, I found a set of watercolor brushes in a, a home decor store in the town next to my town. Well, I bought the brushes because the price was right and I fell in love with watercolor brushes and it's a love affair that continues to this day. I'm telling you, this scotch tape is so good. It is really sticking to me. I'm thinking I love this stuff. So definitely let me know what you're using though. I'm going to buy some more of that. But that that um, set of watercolor brushes I bought dried out. I used them. Well, I used them to the point where they died. Okay. And so now I had to go get more. So I got this one. This is, uh, I don't even know how to say that. I'm just going to put it up here and let you see the brand. Okay, there it is. And this is 36 
double-ended watercolor brush pins. I am in love with watercolor brushes. I am so in love. I can't even, words in the English language cannot convey how in love with these pins I really am, okay? So you get, with this set, you get this nice, sharp point on this end. And then you get a really beautiful big brush on the other end. And I love these. Oh my gosh. Okay. So a couple other things that I have found in my travels of my art supply addiction. <laughs> I am an art supply hoarder. Let me look at all the colors you get, first of all. And you know me, I'm all about the earth. Look at this earthy green, forest green, dark charcoal gray, light gray, yellow ochre. There's like this, this yellow here. Here's bright, you get the bright, and then you get the more toned, toned down orange yellow, and you get this brownish. This is a brown that's uh, kind of like a brown yellow ochre. And then look at these earth. Oh my gosh, I love this set so much. Did I say that? Because I want to make sure you know that I love these. <laughs> if you get these, you might just lose your mind like I am, okay? And I'm not even getting paid to tell you about it. But let's set these aside for a moment. Now, I have a card making addiction. <laughs> and I haven't made any cards for quite a while. So I wanted to make some cards here on my channel. And here's my plan. Now, this is a Paper Studio product, these envelopes. And these are awesome. They are 8.875 inches by 3.875 inches. Such a weird size. Very weird size. Here's the centimeter. 22.54 centimeter by 9.84 centimeter, if that helps you out more. Let me get it up here for you. I hope it's focused. Okay, long rectangle. Here's how it looks. You get this long rectangle with the half circle closure on it envelope okay this is the only envelope that Hobby Lobby sells I get these at Hobby Lobby this is the only one that sells that does not sell cards with it so I had cut some cards and I can tell you what they are real quick I can tell you in inches I'm an inch person it's just the way it is you're gonna have to love me anyways if you're a centimeter person okay this is eight and an eighth okay eight and one eighth by and it's a weird size because the envelope is a weird size by nine and a half okay so that's what i've done to make this card fit into this envelope and then what I want to do is take a piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to measure them out and tape them off and next week we're going to do some abstract watercolor brush cards so make sure you come back for that these envelopes I love raw, long rectangles I love this size I don't know why it's not even just this size it's the shape I love rectangles and the longer and skinnier the better I'm so into it I just love it so much and it's kind of hard because it doesn't really film the best because you know the camera view is this wide angle camera view but it works for me so I hope it works for you and then I wanted to show you I've got these other ones you can get this little one this is five and a half by four and a quarter cards and envelopes 12 pack by the paper studio and then here's some five and a quarter by seven and a quarter and then you get a pack of envelopes 12 and a pack of cards cards 12 and these come separate this comes as a kit with both and then these are envelopes only and then same thing here's some more five and a quarter by seven um, the cards are seven the envelopes are seven and a quarter and same with these black but they have all different colors 
and all different sizes and if you like to make cards all of the paper studio stuff goes on sale it's like every third week where i'm at and i'm in colorado so that's what i have seen so if you haven't subscribed like i said like i always say subscribe show me some love i hope you love this little beautiful little collage and i hope you print off some of your own images and make some some of this stuff for yourself and for the people that you love in your life that you want to make something really special for and the other beautiful thing about copyright free images is you can sell them so you cannot go wrong with these and it opens up a whole new world to being able to get images that you can't go out and photograph yourself so until we meet again I hope you have the greatest day today and I will see you very soon. Have a good one.